<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and uh, wherever you have joined us from on this day. Uh, it's a privilege uh, and a wonderful opportunity uh, to, to come to you this morning you know on marriage melodies as i'm enjoying this beautiful one from sammy Okposo, a very energetic live performer of the gospel music and so this is a very beautiful part of the song that i love a lot and i hope that uh, our friends uh, you are sharing this video that all of them should join us on this installment of marriage melodies <laughs> you know, let's enjoy that a little bit Why others join us You know I have been You know That's the part You know Thank you very much. Let us enjoy. This is a, a native song from Samuel Bush. He said, Help me to the joys, my brothers and sisters. For God has done it well for all of us. And I appreciate those who are actively, busily making their marriages a beautiful experience. For some are engaged in destructive habit of marriage and every day they are digging in deep because of the many problems that marriages are facing in our world today what we have come to see is that marriages are becoming unattractive to young ones and so i'm doing a series on the foundation for the bible says where the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do practically nothing nothing and so if you lay the right foundation you are likely to start very well and when you start very well you cruise quite right and smooth you know so uh, today is freestyle I'm going to be you know taking you know answering some questions if they come and so what are we talking about today we're looking at marriages why are marriages becoming less attractive is because some people are actively in partnership with satan making their marriages unhealthy and i always tell you that marriage is indeed a gift from god and the quality of our marriages is our gift to him and if this is so what are you doing now what's the quality of your marriage some people, the research that was conducted by United Nations in a hundred countries confirmed that marriages have, the rates of marriages are dropping very fast. And this, this is happening mostly in advanced societies, societies that have become developed, where they have a lot of resources, where they have a lot for man and woman to enjoy financially and otherwise. If, does it mean therefore that development an advancement is inimical to the institution of marriage that question bothers my mind and i decided to look at a small part of it and what is that part one of the reasons given predominantly is that women have become more educated and they are now become more financially independent of someone else supporting them and that they have become more choosier in the choice of men they want to marry there's nothing wrong in being choosy in fact a woman must take her spiritual time and be close to god in saying yes to that proposal for marriage is very critical in the journey peaceful journey of a woman in this mortal life because if you make a wrong choice your life will be disturbed and it has an effect of affecting your spiritual journey 
upon this is the reason I call on women to be very choosy. But now that you have become choosier, and what is making you to be as choosy as you are is because of the money you have, or because of the academic qualification and career success. These things are good that a woman should achieve the height of her career. She should achieve the pinnacle of her success. But God did not intend that this success should affect the very foundation of her being. For marriage is the foundation of society and God designed it in a way that she will help society become better. And so today when you have more crime, more devices, more deviance, when you have decadence at this rate, people are quick to say it's end time. No, you are end time indeed, but a Christian is not supposed to be an active player to pull the end time in. God warned us of the end time so that we will play a role, not to let it come in a hurry, so that we will become the forces of good on earth. He said that we should let our light shine. You know, let it shine that people will, will see and come onto it. Today we emit darkness because even in the courts, the judges, unbeliever judges, are presiding over the breakup of Christian marriages. That is a disgrace to Christianity and a disgrace to Christ. For you should be able, as Christians, to resolve your issues if you obey the word of God. For the husband is the head and the wife is the subject. And the wife should subject herself to her husband as fitting in the Lord, and that cannot have cried. Right? Anytime you see couples having problems, you know they do not obey the word of God completely. You know that either the husband is disobeying the word of God, or the wife is doing so, or the two of them are actively disobeying the word of God. For when you obey the word of God, peace reigns. That's why they say Christ is the prince of peace and if it is indeed in you why are you not at peace <laughs> why are you not at peace if your marriage is founded on christ as you went on to take that vow that i've told you should not take again those who have not taken don't jesus said you should vow no vow so those who do those earthly vows are it makes marriages null and void from the start you make a vow which at the end you don't keep. Even when you keep it, he said, it is advisable that don't even let your yes be yes and your no be no. And that anything that comes out of this or more than that is from evil. So this statement becomes clear that Christians should submit themselves to the tradition of marriage as God has planned it, that in all races, in all cultures, marriage is ordained by God and his hands in it wherever that culture is on earth and every traditional marriage is sanctioned by god and elevated above all but through instrumentality of colonialism the western people brought the the western civic marriage which has made marriage more of a contract and it is upon this that a lot of infiltrations have come into the marital union where now man can marry man if it were to be traditional only it would be very difficult to see a community where man a father will call his people and say i want to give my son to this man or this my daughter to this lady to be very difficult but because society has surrendered itself to satan's manipulation it's easy for the instruments of government to be hijacked by satan and the men can go and sign a register that they are husbands and wives very difficult to achieve to see you know, recently we heard of a very popular cross dresser. They call him cross dresser, but he's not crossing to anywhere. He is trying to blur the line between man and woman. The Bible says the name is called Bob Risky. If I shall, this is a risky Bob. He is a man who decided to always appear like a woman. And the, in defiance of the word of God in Deuteronomy, that a man should not wear what pertains to a woman. And it, these words are very spiritual. God is telling you, do not appear to people if you are a male gender like a woman. And woman don't appear like a man. For these two genders are distinct. It is by the power of God that we have been brought together. There is a gulf 
between man and woman. It's God's power that unites them in marriage in order to make a certain spiritual presentation before God so that when God sees an angel, he sees the completeness of his creation. But men have split them into two. Jesus said, in that time, there is no giving or taking of marriage. What was he trying to explain? To explain a higher doctrine of the fact that they are like angels, meaning you and your wife becomes one and become angelic in departure. And when the two have not fulfilled the auction of God, they separate in death, like the, by the, the earthly marriage says, till death do us part. It's not a traditional vow. It's not a statement in traditional marriage. Marriages in traditional circles are till the end of time. You see, there's something that we do not understand. It's so deep, but I can't fully explain it in this, in this short time that I have to spend with you this morning. But take note, I said all this to me, that marriage is sacred union, not partnership. Union of two becoming one to the eternal ascension of angelic, you know, substance. It's deep. But we trivialize marriage, that's why we fight in it. You can't fight that in which you are in one capsule with. <laughs> God is a marvelous God. He has simplified everything, but man has complicated it. And every day we keep complicating it because we think we are wise. No. Any knowledge that a man acquires should never be at the suspension of God's knowledge. You must subject your PhD degrees, your professorial accomplishments under the wisdom of God. If you go above it, you are out of order. The woman, which is the focus, they said women are not getting married because they have become more educated. What you are doing to yourself, if you allow it to happen to you, what you have done is that you have suspended the wisdom of God and allow man-acquired, man-made academic success to affect your spiritual structure. If you don't have it in your heart that man has become less than you because you have become elevated, it means Satan has blessed you. When God educates a child, the child becomes humble and teachable. So if God has educated a woman, she is supposed to know that her submission to a man or to her man is a spiritual undertaking. That's why many women miss it today. They get educated and they become unattractive. Naturally, the more a woman is educated, the more she becomes uh, higher in status than other men. It reduces your chances, obviously, that's naturally. But if you really can submit yourself, the man that you're looking down on now could be the man God has destined for you because no man appears to be that great at the beginning. And so because the journey of life is that a man will progress and prosper and his wife is supposed to be part of that enterprise, a lot of women miss it. So they, look, they tend to look down on that man that comes around them. And many missed it that way. You have become rich and wealthy and you've bought houses. That is not what you are. You are a wife of someone. Those achievements, we applaud you. They are good for you. But don't let them stand in your way of getting married and submissive to your man. For a woman is created because of marriage. Let no one deceive you. A lot of young and inexperienced pastors tend to encourage because the church has been is now full of spinsters, unmarried, matured women. They do not know what to do. What they are now saying to them is motivating them and encouraging them to remain single, saying that marriage is not compulsory. When you teach young women that way, they have an escape route. But the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter five, he said, he said, then no, chapter seven from verse one, he said, look. In order to avoid fornication, each of one of you should have your own wife or your own husband. Look at the word. God Almighty view fornication as a stumbling block. It will make you not to enter his kingdom. He now says, in order to avoid it, every damage that fornication causes to a man, God says, no, say marry. Which means if you say you won't marry, the question is, has, they, has that person who told you is not composed also told you that you cannot fornicate? You cannot have sexual affairs with anyone as you choose. 
So what we see today is that they become women are successful and they become free agent of sex with any man that can afford them or any man they pretend to keep as a boyfriend. They flow from parties to party and behave in a manner of harlots. This is a woman that is now educated. This is a woman that has acquired the world's good. Whose career is big, but she's a toy in the hands of irresponsible men. She's used. She's the one they invite to the parties because she's free. She's an open door. Why would you throw yourself in that way? That's why it's advisable for a woman, while building the career, she'll know that what needs to be settled first is the foundation. You need to resolve the issues of marriage early enough, simply because of your biological clock. As you allow time to pass, the older you get, the less your fertility. These are very proven scientific facts. And why then should a woman throw herself in order, because they deceive you. A woman can become a master's degree holder in her marital home. So many have done so. You can become great as you are married. So many have done so. Those who thought that, no, I want to be successful first. <laughs> the journey becomes longer. As they go, they hit 40, 45. They become depressed and unhappy. People celebrate and enjoy with them. But in their privacy and quietness, they know that they've driven the ship in the wrong direction. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning I'm happy to come to you to deal with these issues because they are very critical in our society today. To the extent that young men are afraid of women. They are afraid of women. You know, you ask them, you see an eligible bachelor, well resourced and financially okay. They say, no, the women are difficult. They are, I cannot... I, I can't come to them. You you say this, they say three. They are, you know, a woman is naturally knowledgeable. A woman is naturally endowed with wisdom. Take a look at what Eve did in this happen. It takes an intelligent person to have a conversation with this with Satan, who came in the guise of a serpent. A serpent. It's you, intelligence. She desired to be like God. That's the woman's makeup. It's it, the first woman desired to be like God. So her children, naturally, the daughters also have the same inclination. You know, they have the genetic code of their mother. They want to be like God. And they want the man to be under them. They want to rule the man. That, but God said in Genesis chapter, you know, 3 verse 16. He said, your desire shall be, shall be. Is to control your husband. Just go and read the New Living Translation. <laughs> but he shall rule over you. God decreed so because it was a very free way of, of leadership that God created between Adam and Eve. They flow into leadership naturally. Today, this one, they don't even realize it. It's natural. But of when the woman took her leadership moment to, to, to bring down the word of God, God decreed that man now rule. That decree, Satan says it will not work. Man cannot rule woman. So Satan is actively confusing woman. Emboldening her to take the place she shouldn't take. So many in their marital homes are ruling their husbands. They have prepared themselves to rule. They tell you I want to be independent. That statement is Satan's agenda for a woman to rule her man. You cannot be independent of who you are supposed to be dependent on. For Genesis 3.16 says, All thy desire shall be to thy husband. <laughs> you see, Satan is wise. But the human, humanity, Christians, are not wise anymore. The moment you miss your faith with secular ideologies, the Spirit of God pulls her because he doesn't understand it. He doesn't speak it. He doesn't cohabit with it. For light and darkness cannot coexist. So if you are a secular thinker, a carnal-minded person, you, you hardly please God. You might think you are in God's stead because you are being motivated and you are always dancing and, and enjoying when you go to a church service. You really enjoy the socialization, but you are not paying attention to the spiritual symbols and truths that are being presented before you. So many are led astray. But now that the pandemic has come, we've not been to church. What now is your faith quality like? It is now that Christians are known. For Christianity is not 
the gathering of the church. Christianity is the behavior of the Christian. The gathering of the church is to learn what we should do. When we get out of gathering, we now practice Christianity. In our marriages is where the true test of our Christianity you know, takes place. And do you know what happened? Many fail. Many fail, sadly. They fail to the extent that they break the marriage. To the extent that they go to a court of law and ask the judge to separate them. In disobedience to the word of God that says, Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 19. He said, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So women think that scripture is for an intruding woman. When a woman is intruding or some in-laws are disturbing them. <laughs> That's what they reduce it to somebody separating or, and put no, no. That statement is meaning that let no man, including you, the man or the woman, including the society, the courts, the judges are prohibited. Let no man put us on that. God has sealed it. It's a union. But we don't understand these things deeply. We see them as mere instructions. But they are at the fulcrum of our spiritual wellness. For Malachi said that anyone who is involved in this or violence is in his garment. Vow. Do you know what you mean of violence? Spiritual violence. Because everything you do thereafter becomes spiritually you know, violating. Violence. You will be having hatred. You will be having resentment. You will be having unforgiveness. You will be having sexual intercourse outside of marriage again committing adultery you see that violence is there the grace of god is not a license to sin it does not cover the sin it only allows the sinner a leeway to change how do you change out of an adulterous marriage where two of you are not supposed to marry you are married but you are not supposed to because the marriage is not qualified to be called marriage and the act that you are committing in that marriage is adultery today you repent you go back to it you can't repent from armed robbery and having stolen you go again and repent and tell god that you are repenting and you are committing the robbery repentance is to turn around and stop the wrong how do you stop the wrong when you are already involved in a marriage that is under the under disqualified God is a God of love, but is a God of justice. He is fair. He painfully chastises those he loves. None of us should take his love for granted. I say all this thing because a lot of women do not understand why they remain unmarried when they are already at an old age. So I want to let them know that the successes gained in this mortal life are not to taint your spiritual projection and vision. They are supposed to allow you to see more clearly and understand more deeply that this journey is not of your own. It's a journey that God has designed to bring you back to an expected end. And God on a daily basis is working to ensure that. And he has done his part. What is your part? So for those who enter marriage, take note that that place is not anyone's place. That is God's place. That is your church. That is your religion. That is, if, in fact, before the act of worship, the first act, marriage was ordained, instituted, and sealed. I said it again. Some people might be confused. When I said the woman is created because of marriage. Yes. When God finished his work and he finished creating the man, he said he looked at it and said, it's good. God doesn't talk about that. He didn't use the excellent. His word is good. But he said, it's not good for a man. You see, the only thing that's not good is that a man should be alone. But everything was good. But it's not good for a man to be alone. He created man and gave him a, a journey. He gave him dominion. He told him everything is, 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 everything is good. But he said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. The word meet means suitable. Take note of this word. So you, this woman that has become educated, that become flamboyant, you are rich. You are made for a man. Suitable for him. You are not made for men. What did he say after? He, he put the man into a deep state. He didn't even consult the man. So man is not part of the decision to create woman. He was put, he did, at least they should have allowed him to see the process. He was put in a deep sleep, which is called temporal death. 
and his rib was opened up and woman can you see god when i said we are going back to oneness the oneness was exemplified that the woman was brought from where she belonged those who see marriage as a joke some some women are so bold you know what they say <laughs> when i enter if he doesn't behave i walk i walk <laughs> look at how satan deceive a grown-up person you walk from what you think you entered a partnership contract? No. You entered a sacred union ordained by the divine good, the divine law, whose name alone is Jehovah, the uncreated, self-existing God. Is the one that you are trivializing in that marriage that's supposed to be beautiful. An example unto the world. For Satan has known his people his people are those who work against marriage. Those God people are those who work for marriage, who make it happen. Someone told me, what is what is what what if you lose your life? <laughs> Every day I hear that. What if it's a the threat of life? The question is, we will not go back to what's threatening. The question is, if the Bible says, if you lose your life in the process of advancing the work of God sustaining the principles of god god says he will give it to you more abundantly but if you gain your life you didn't die you ran away broke marriage use any excuse god say you have already trampled upon my doctrines and my dictates and now you have your life he said you will lose it so ultimately you will still have it so it's better you lose your life in sustaining the word of god lose your life so what should you do Build yourself in a manner that you sustain the marriage rather than focusing on escape. Discipline yourself. A woman should be submissive. That's all you should be learning. Without the currency of submission, marriage is not a marriage. For the Bible says that a man who is a man should be the head of his wife, that a man who doesn't head his wife is an effeminate. He cannot enter God's kingdom. And look at what you have done. You came into a man's life because you have become rich. You have Brazilian hair. It's not your hair. You have made up yourself like a goddess. Your fingernails are long. Even your, bo your buttocks was already made up with artificialness. So you are not exactly your full copy. And yet you will not let the husband to rule. You think these artificial additions are you? No. For the Bible says in 1 Peter, you know, Chapter 3, he said that the beauty of a Christian woman is not of the plating of the hair, not of the broidered hair, the wearing of expensive apparel and gold and the decoration of the body. It's of the inner man. A lot of Christian children are decorating the outward person. The inside empty. Someone wrote that they cannot even boil egg. This morning I dedicated because marriage is going extinct and my research shows that men are afraid of women now. And truly speaking, if you look at your community and your society, you will see that one lady is there now who, because of her choose her nature, she has cars, houses, she is still there searching. She tells you she's searching, she's not searching. It's just no one is finding her because she has covered herself up with in irrelevant things. So she looks like a shrine that is being worshipped shrine an idol men don't worship idols they don't worship their wives so they don't go to such places at best they can come and view you and go away and that's what is happening and this is why i call on women to retrace their step and know that marriage is ordained by god is an institution for godly people and not for people who are learning to be godly Finally, this morning, let us remember that a woman's success is not to be against her spiritual understanding. You can be anything you want to be. You can be the richest woman or the richest person on earth. You can be the president of all nations. God says you are to be submissive to your husband. That is the rule. If you don't prepare yourself for this responsibility, you will find marriage difficult to enter. Because Satan will continue to add up to you, to make you a big shrine, a big, to, sorry, the word shrine is just symbolic, to make you so large that men will become smaller. The more men are smaller, your choices are difficult. 
The men that will qualify will not be available for you, but they will use you and enjoy you. When they enjoy you, they will go to the next one. Today, all the young men that are eligible, they have, they have more than five girlfriends. They change them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes from the same church, and they are fighting one another. They're in the choir. Three will be fighting over one boy. And they don't know they're dating the same boy. On Wednesdays, you go. Tuesdays for uh, for Juliet. Wednesdays for Amaka. What is all this? You see the role you are playing? You see that you are actively promoting uh, disorder in the world. And you say you are a Christian. The next thing they tell you is end time. Who told, you think you are supposed to be an agent of end time? What role are you playing in the end time? You think it's about uh, one pastor deceiving people? The only people think, oh, it's end time. Oh, the end? No. <laughs> you, you are one of the proponents of a peaceful world for you, an agent, an ambassador of Christ. What is your role? So let's be very clear that we understand that marriage is a sacred union. And the success chalked by a woman on earth should not taint her vision and understanding. Woman, be submissive and drop all your pride which Satan has hung on your body because pride goeth before a fall. It has no place in the kingdom of God. So if you have any sense of pride in your heart, purge it out now. Ask God to forgive you and you repent so you can properly bring yourself down for a man to be attract for you to be attractive to a man. For a woman, the Bible says again in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, 1 Peter, it said that it is not of the broad the plating of the hair, but of the inner man. It said the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit is of great price before the Lord. Look at that quotation, of a meek and quiet spirit. Jesus said in John, he said, learn of me, for I am lowly, I am meek and lowly in heart. You see, meekness is a quality. It's a virtue. Every woman should have it. And of a quiet spirit, not a cantankerous spirit. The one that quarrels at every time. If you already have these two spirits, go for deliverance. Deliver yourself by, by feeding your body with the beautiful words of God. For God's word sanctifies and it delivers. If you read it, meditate upon it, it will fill you the way food, you know, the way bread fill you. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comments from the mouth of God. The word of God delivers a child of God. When you read it, meditate upon it, it refreshes, it, um, it makes you a, a, a living person. But emptiness brings death. And that's why many women today, they are doing all man. They now call themselves baby mamas. You see how they disgrace themselves? You said of you being a honorable wife of a man, you turn yourself to a baby mama. That is a derogatory place. It's an insult for you to be donating your children to all manner of men. And when your children grow up, say, Mommy, where's our dad? You begin to say you belong to Matthew. You belong to John. You belong to Bokolo. Look at it. And the children will, will turn back and they will look at you. What is, where did we come from that we all have different fathers? That's a disgrace. God has prepared your way. God has solved your problem. And yet, only you will take yourself into a dishonorable place. Education. 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 Money. Is this supposed to be a problem? No. It's supposed to make you a happy person. But it has become now your albatross. Finally, I went into a gender study a school. I was doing a program. And um, we, there, was a there was a particular course called gender studies. And I, I, I was participating in the course. And at the end, that school indeed was a Christian school. And I saw that the, the teachings in that booklet of gender studies was one, it, it described the man as an aggressor who is an, a right abuser. He ended up by saying that the women have so many rights that their husband said this, it's an abuse of their right. That book, that course was, was cause for concern. And I asked the teacher if they had studied this, this particular manual and they have, you know, connected, they have looked at the doctrines upon which this school, this school is a Christian school, whether they agree together. And that with this kind of doctrine, the half, more than half of this class will be divorced in, in the next five years. 
And this is true. And so anyone who is not wise become foolish and follow the ways of satanic teachings. Knowledge is good, but you must, you must weigh every knowledge you acquire against the word of God. So that what is contradictory, you discard and take those wholesome knowledge that will help you to be a good person on this earth and be a successful wife or successful husband. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the time you spent and the data you have invested. I am really proud of you and I hope that if you find this video after the live broadcast, my word and my prayer is that you will share it to as many people, especially to the women who now know that they have the opportunity to, to become rich, to, to become educated, to become whatever they want. Let this not stand against you. For many have made the mistake. Send it to all the young ones who are still in the university. Let a woman not be too expensive for a man. For example, when a man is deciding to have a wife, he's taking an economic decision, not only about a romantic decision. Because he will look at the woman if the woman appears to be very expensive, it affects most of his decision even when you feel a lot of love and affection for the woman. Because it is not easy to walk yourself into a trap. For marriage is an economic enterprise. The moment you start it, the moment you, you say, I like you, this woman, you begin to spend a lot of financial resources to make the marriage a reality and to make the marriage sustained. You wake up in the morning, the tap of the water tap is paid for, the toothbrush is paid for, the, the, the toothpaste is paid for, the first food is paid for, the bed on which you so it's an economic decision. So if a woman is already set herself up so expensive, young women are finishing university, they look so expensive, they their lifestyle is so expensive. Which man do you want to bring into a life and let him start at a velocity that he has not even accustomed himself to? So these are some of the issues that bothers me and I decided to share them with you this morning so that we will do well and God will be proud for the Bible says that these people I have formed for myself, they will show forth my praise. We should do so with our marriages. Finally, marriage is a gift from God and the quality of our marriage is our gift to Him. I wish you well. I thank you for listening and share this video to everyone and if you've seen it on youtube subscribe to my youtube channel and ensure that you hit the bell so that you get notification theo akatuba is my name bye for now